이것이 하늘의 검! 2016 League of Legends KESPA Cup coming to you live from the Nexon Arena in Gangnam, Seoul, South Korea for the match that you've all been waiting for. This is the return of the World of Champions, SK Telecom T1, playing off against the biggest underdogs we have seen this tournament in KEG Jungnam. Yep, and uh, this team has some interesting players actually on it. Uh, we were just pointing out a little bit earlier that Fire Rain, as most played champion in solo queue on challenger level Korea, is actually Mordekaiser with a 70% win rate. And uh, their top laner, uh, Wu Tae, he is actually a pretty phenomenal NAR player, and uh, he actually almost went to LPL. So there's lots of potential here, and specifically uh, from Fire Rain, of course, well, let's actually talk about the players on your screen. <laughs> you can see them, Wolf, Bang, Faker, Blink, and their new top laner, Profit. Yep, and uh, so SK Telecom coming into this tournament as the reigning world champions, and uh, not seeing Duke play, at least not in game number one, so maybe they're just looking to give some of their players uh, some more new experience. They definitely have other players here, though, and here is KG Chungnam's team, Wute, Jeha, Fire Rain, Jihoon, and Chandong, all the players here actually using their real names. And you might say, well, what parent would name their kid Fire Rain? And that's actually just the meanings of his Korean names. The characters put together combined to form Fire Rain, which is pretty darn cool. So now let's welcome on stage our player representatives for both teams. This is SK Telecom T1 Blank. Let's see what Blank has to say about the games here tonight. Blank saying, you know, it's been such a long time since I've said, uh, stood in front of a big audience of Korean fans. It's been over a month since we were able to play a match on domestic soil, and, you know, it really feels like a brand new experience. So having to play against KEG Chunam, uh, apparently Blank went to the same high school as Jeha. And Blank saying, when I was in school, this kid was in Diamond 5. So I don't know how he made it up here. Oh, this is sick trash talk. Now Blank, uh, as, a professional, as a professional player, how do you rate Jeha? The uh, opposing jungler. He says, I'm really excited uh, for him. I think he has a bright future ahead of him. Uh, he's really an exciting prospect. So, some high words of praise coming out from Blank. Now, turning over to uh, Jeha. This is the jungler for KEG So, congratulations, Jeha for uh, you know, joining uh, KEG uh, Chunam University uh, for eSports studies. Jeha saying thank you. Now, it would only add to your congratulations if you beat K, uh, SK Telecom today. So what does he think of that? Jeha says, you know, it's an honor to be playing the world champions SK Telecom T1, but you know, our team in our own right have been preparing really hard. We're going to make sure that we put up a really nice match. We're going to do it for the interview with both of our player representatives. So let's start the last match of the round of 12. The opening round here at the 2006 League of Legends Kespa Cup. In front of a packed out audience of fans here in Seoul, South Korea. A couple of big fans ourselves here on uh, the caster desk to welcome you to our final game of this round of 12. Certainly a pleasure to get a chance to watch SK Telecom T1, uh, including uh, some new faces on the team. Uh, 
course, uh, their top laner Prophet, uh, formerly of uh, Young Glory in China, where he was a top laner there, came back to Korea, and SK Telecom uh, quick to pick him up. So, might also be seeing a substitute in the support role, but Wolf will be starting for SKT, at least to start out. Yep, there is uh, Aiming and Taehoon are both here at the arena, as well as Duke, in case maybe something goes a little bit wrong in game number one, maybe they just instantly swap him back in. Um, yeah, SK Telecom would not like to get eliminated this Kespa Cup like not they like did last that. year. Yeah. Not again. Not got like some that. Painful memories. But uh, I hope that we get to see some Mordekaiser today. That would be pretty exciting because I don't know if SK Telecom's actually going to ban it because that's I mean, not a champion you generally tend to want to ban. We've seen Comfort Picks banned out before, but as we get in here to champion picks and bans for game number one, will that be prioritized well enough? First ban will, of course, come to KEG Chungnam, who are starting off on the blue side. That's going to take Syndra away from Faker. SKT, what will they... Okay, no. this is the no fun zone. No more to Kaiser for you, Fire Rain, taking away his highest win rate champion. Of course, next up is going to be the Nidalee ban. Pretty much a foregone conclusion, like we said earlier. So two highest uh, priority champions banned away from KEG Chungnam on the blue side. Kind of surprising. And there's the NAR next to come out against Wu-Tei, his best champion. Yeah, and Nidalee being banned away, no surprise there at all. He's definitely not a champion that uh, should ever be let through the pick and ban phase. Although, you could make arguments to let it through against SK Telecom. But uh, well, probably this is, not. This is blank. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe if Bengi were around, we might have second thoughts. Except he did actually crush with it when he played it at Worlds. So yep, you, against you Rocks Tigers. You just don't want to let that champion through ever. There's an Oriana ban uh, for KEG Chungnam, and uh, the Riot is to round out our bans for SK Telecom T1. Uh, really, kind of uh, taking away a couple of options there for Fire Rain. Yep. And uh, we'll see what KEG elect for as their first pick. Now that uh, Nar and Mordecai are actually off the table, it's not like they have any super comfort picks remaining. Now, we've seen a lot of first pick Olaf's, first pick uh, Jace's also out there, lots of high priority. And I, I guess at this point, it's either about uh, grabbing something that you see that's very powerful right off the bat. I would say something like maybe Caitlyn on the board, uh, but that's going to be a Karma hovered over and with 30 seconds left, uh, should just be... Uh should be a solid lock-in to start things off, but certainly a lot of very powerful picks up there, and the Karma will get locked in for either Fire Rain uh, or Chandal. Yeah, and one of the problems with not selecting Olaf here is uh, Blank and Bengi are not super mechanical junglers, uh, so even though there is a lease left open, or a lease Sin, uh, it's highly more likely to see them just pick up that Olaf uh, if it's handed back over to them, and there is a highlight on it, and Ash right now, uh, and if you do pick the Ash with Caitlyn and Jin being left open, it is a soft counter, and that's something that Bang is obviously going to have a lot of comfort with. Uh, although I would have expected a more traditional Caitlyn or Jin pick, given that they were both open from SK Telecom. That is very true. Uh, gonna get locked in. The Ash Olaf combo. Like you said, maybe he's not first picking that Olaf away from SKT. It's a little bit of a problem there. You can see on your screen at Coma. Probably the most over overworked coach in League of Legends. Still back at it behind his team as they face off against KEG Chungnam, who have two more picks left to come their way. Now, for Fire Rain, when it comes to this guy, uh, a big fan of the Mordekaiser, like we mentioned earlier. But he also has quite a bit more, including things like the Vladimir that's being hovered over, uh, and of course, a, a big Zed and Ryze fan uh, as well, even in the current meta. So, the Vladimir makes a lot of sense to see as it is his most second most played champion. Yep. And uh, a Kevin, a uh, Kevin Hover. So, my problem with this is you have a Karma already who is a pretty hard-hitting uh, magic damage support. You have Ken inhaling from the top lane, and now you pick a periodic damage dealer in the mid lane as well inside of the Vladimir. KG's draft, in my eyes already, is actually really disastrous. Uh, yeah, where's the, uh, where's the physical, physical damage coming from? It's not going to be from that Kenneth Doran's blade, that's for sure. So you're going to need to pick up some more along the way. Uh, what's SKT looking for and now as they close in on the lock-ins? It's going to be a Jace and Nami. Yeah, uh, the Nami is just there to basically disrupt the Kennen. Uh, it also disrupts any sort of super hard engage attempts off the Karma. Uh, from trying to speed up her team into coming into SK Telecoms. And I mean, at this point, Ezreal also deals a little bit of magic damage, and 
the Lee Sin, I, 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 I can't help but feel like th this pick ban has already been actually super disastrous because this Olaf is actually going to have the luxury of potentially being able to go Solari's Locket uh, into a Spirit Massage and just continuously stack uh, Magic Resistance against this KEG team. And I can't see a way in which they can actually win team fights if it reaches the mid game. And we were actually talking about this earlier. No jungler snowballs quite as hard as Olaf when he gets uh, a lead in the early game and against KEG Chungnam. Uh, you can see that they're they're staying true to what they mentioned in their pregame interview, is saying that they're just going to play their game and do the best that they can on what they know, and then hopefully that is good enough to uh, lead them uh, to a good showing versus SKT. Yep, and it looks like Malzahar. A uh, pick that was almost entirely absent at Worlds, but we did get to see him a lot yesterday, is picked up here for uh, SK Telecom. So that's going to be a mid lane Malzahar against the Vladimir. Didn't see it at all day one. It came out several times yesterday, and now back in the mid lane there for Faker. Uh, unless they want to switch that up, pull a trace, and put that Malzahar up in the top lane, uh, it should just be swapped into the mid lane for Faker to see how he pilots that Void Mage. Yep. And uh, Vladimir in mid against Malzahar doesn't have uh, such a bad time. Uh, Malzahar does have ways to still kill Vladimir even through his pool, mostly due to the Malefic Visions. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, these lanes for KEG look pretty horrible. It's going to put a lot of pressure on Jeha to actually find ways to make stuff happen. Um, and I just feel like SK Telecom absolutely obliterated this draft. Certainly does uh, seem that way. Let's go ahead and go over the rosters for both teams, starting for KEG Chungnam, Wu Te, Jeha, Fire Rain, Jihoon, and then rolling it over to SK Telecom T1, your world champions. Profit on a very aggressive Jace pick to go up against that cannon. Blank, Faker, Bang, and Wolf. The starting roster there for SKT. So if you want to get out there and show your support for our teams, hashtag SKT win, hashtag KG win. So we get into our first game of our second series of the night, SK Telecom versus KEG Chunga. All right, well, here we go. I was actually waiting for our crowd cheers to start this off. It looks like we'll be foregoing those for the very interesting early game that could be set up. Now, Blank is actually going to face check into Jeha and Shandong. Jihoon coming around the side. Blank dropping very, very low. We could see first blood against SKT here very, very early. But Blank popping the ghost, and he'll actually make it out alive. All right, well, not the way that SKT may have wanted to start things off, but they're going to trade two for one in Summoners, uh, which is actually a good start for KEG to now. Yeah, and that was actually that uh, Lee Sin thing that we got to almost see happen in the previous game, where uh, the jungler comes bottom immediately uh, to look for those sort of like cheese attempts and deny it and punish. And pretty big win for uh, Chungnam as they get two summoners for one. That is true. It's going to be the exhaust on Changdong that was sacrificed there. So all in all, almost a kill on the blank. But Ghost is a pretty short cooldown, and so it sh he should have that summoner up by the time he's through his initial jungle route and ready to gank. So now no safe fan across uh, the map. That was actually a pretty aggressive early start. The first one that we've really seen so far this tournament, aside from uh, the last KEG team we got a chance to see out on the field. But let's go ahead and talk about the way that both of these teams are starting out. Neither duo lane deciding to start a camp early, uh, and both junglers starting on opposite sides of the map. Yep. And uh, Olaf not needing uh, a leash at all, and he is uh, one of the fastest clearing junglers in the game. Continuing to uh, just see trades there around the bottom half of the map. Deep Ward placed around the Raptors by Faker. 
And Fire Rain there in lane against him. Really excited to see that matchup. Uh, Fire Rain, out of all of the members of KAG Chungnam, has the most professional competitive experience. Now, if that's the best thing that you can say about your mid laner when they're going up against Faker, it's still a pretty big mismatch. So having to keep an eye on that, of course, that ward uh, by the Raptor camp did not actually spot out Jeha while he was walking around to his red buff. So actually a pretty big miss there as that was why the ward was placed there initially. Yep, and a uh, little hawk shot coming out by Bang that will uh, discover Fire Ray or Jeha, and now they know exactly where his he is and what routes he can possibly take. And I mean, when you're on a Lee Sin uh, with as difficult lanes as Jeha has right now, this is what I was talking about in the pick and ban phase. Uh, it almost feels like he's going to be entirely useless early on. Oh, Chandong trading very heavily with Wolf, who uh, at least seemingly has a sustained advantage, although uh, it's karma and you can always monitor yourself into some extra health if you want to. Now, Jeha over around the same area that Blank is, coming around the corner, but opts for the Scuttle Crab instead of heading towards his blue. Blank, uh, still on it. If Jeha comes around the corner, he might actually be able to steal that away. Blank not actually choosing to spite that, so... Wow, that actually could have been a great steal attempt. Jeha up towards the top half of the map. Prophet looking to maybe knock it back away. He knows the blank is there. Double buff Olaf right on top of there. Can they turn that around? No, it oh does no. not look like KG2 not want to turn that around. Instead, it's going to be first blood taken by blank. Yep, and uh, that is one of the worst things that you could ever have happen. Uh, Wute is going to be really far behind now up in the top lane. and. Olaf, uh, when he gets ahead, he gets ahead, and now stealing away the Gromp, what this actually does here is that now you know exactly where Lee Sin can go, and now the most problematic lane for uh, KCN is going to be under a lot of pressure without Jungler Raid, and so you can just see how this all started out. Uh, Prophet actually, I think, manipulated this really well. He knew that he could survive a gank from this angle, flashes into blank, and Honestly, this was orchestrated really well by him because he got them to overextend and he got them to take unfavorable uh, positioning inside of the 2v2 and results in a first blood for SKT. Yeah, that Shockblade, uh, Shockwave Axe combo, just so much damage out there in that trade. But now we've got action in the mid lane as Jeha and Fire Rain. They're the ones forced to run away from Faker. Those Voidlings are actually almost killing Jeha. Voidlingu, no, it's not going to find it. But uh, in the end, another gank avoided there by SK Telecom. This time they didn't take the enemy jungler with them, although Blank is certainly there to make it possible. He will escape the uh, Raptor resetting. Blank's not going to take no for an answer and will be able to steal this Raptor away as the Hawkshot flies over just to check it out. And so now, what do you really do if you're Jeha? You know that the enemy doesn't have any wraiths, you can't steal that, your wolves are, grom are gone, your gromp is gone. Well, Ink in the mid lane, Ghost Forest out, Fire Rain should be safe and sound here. And I, I think at this point, even Blank a 2v1 uh, with the, the lower health bars that Chanam do have there. And, okay, Jeha is actually going to get a chance to try that 2v1 out. Blank is faring pretty well at this point. Yep, and uh, Jeha. I mean, his route is completely predicted. You saw the pings go down on the ground because that's the only place he can go. There's no other jungler camp up. And Blank just piggybacking on top of Jeha really keeps him constrained. And Oh, oh the man. flash in from Faker on Fire Rain. He will be able to pull back away. The Malefic Visions run out. Fire Rain survives alive. Yeah, and uh, that's actually pretty uncharacteristic of Faker. Usually uh, when he pulls the trigger on Flash, you would expect him to know whether or not someone is going to die. Good job there by Fire Rain. Uh, maybe knowing that he was not going to get taken down, but oh, Blank, okay. Blank not going quite far enough to find that uh, kill onto Jeha. And the bush, the tri bush was warded out, so wouldn't have been able to find that either. Uh, now, you just got back from Worlds LS where you got a chance to see Faker and the rest of SK Telecom dominate their way uh, to victory. Uh, what was it about SKT that most impressed you there that we can look forward to seeing on display here in the Kespa Cup? Um, SK Telecom can basically do everything. Uh, one of the surprising things, though, is that Blank is being fielded tonight instead of Bengi, given that uh, Bengi was all three of their victories in the finals against Samsung Galaxy. Um, so, it, it, it basically, they just do everything. I, I don't feel like they have any clear-cut defining traits like some of the other Worlds teams that were in uh, the semis, um, but they are the, the world champions, so... 
There are no slouches. Really interested uh, to uh, put all eye. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, right, right as I was about to say, all eyes on Prophet, their new top laner. He gets a 1v1 solo kill against Wu Te. Uh, doesn't get much more impressive than that. Nice to see him at least know when to pull the trigger to pick up that solo kill. Yeah. And actually, I've been really impressed uh, with Prophet. I mean, it's only eight minutes into the game, but. Uh, the way that he's done things are, it's been very intentional, um, and he's just actually showing a very high level of foresight and understanding of the lane, uh, not just in the Ken and Jace matchup, but top lane overall. And speaking of things being intentional, uh, Prophet comes from the, the Chinese team Young Glory. If you've been keeping up with the uh, Chinese League of Legends, uh, you've gotten a chance to see them play and him play on it. Well, that team is actually coached by Puman Du, former support player uh, for SK Telecom. So nice to see how things uh, kind of keep coming back around. It's a small world out there. Now Prophet has come from uh, the uh, Chinese region over here to Korea to play on SK Telecom. Uh, certainly a big opportunity for any player out there in his debut matches here in the Kespa Cup. Yep, and right now in this match, uh, Faker does have a CS lead in mid, but some of that is actually negated by the fact that Fire Rain has been killing Voidlings, and that is not uh, attributed inside of the CS score, so... Bottom lane, Chandong and Jihoon, not long for this world. Even Profit coming down to pick up himself up, not one, but both kills. Now 4-0, the start for SK Telecom, as they dominate that bottom lane. Yeah, and now uh, Faker looking to pick up Dragon with his team right here. Blank coming over, and Blank looks like he's just going to actually solo that. So that's going to be first Blood Tower. Please give it to Bang solo. Uh -oh. And that is what they are going to do. So that is good. So they put the first, uh, first Blood Tower gold onto Bang. And this is a pretty rough spot to be in for uh, Chungnam because it... I mean, it's just the issue with their draft really starting to surface as well uh, as to just getting outplayed by SK Telecom. So you see this, one of the most cookie-cutter four-mans on bottom, and there was nothing they could do. And even if for some reason some sort of resistance was occurring, Baker was already on his way. And we actually saw the very exact same play happen on the opposite side of the map in our first series of the night uh, by Samsung against Rising Star Gaming, that classic teleport bottom lane cookie cutter dive, uh, and it works out once again. Uh, now top lane, Jeha just going to get suppressed, depressed, and headed back to base the hard way. Faker there for his first kill of the game. Yeah, and Jeha not really having a very good game thus far. Blank denying uh, vision control by Chandong. Now Faker going back into mid lane. And I mean, at this point, uh, the question that you really have to ask yourselves is uh, oh, well, hold that thought as. Jeha, I mean, he was trying to come up here to make something happen, but honestly, it just doesn't really make any sense because after the bottom tier one turret falls and you don't see any intel on uh, Wolf, you really have to wonder where is he? Uh, because you can only assume that actually there is a rotation headed toward top lane. Uh, that's kind of the BM replay. We just see him face check and die, and then it's not enough to watch him die once. We have to watch him die again. Stop, he's already dead, literally. But we got to keep keep an eye on it. Well, here's the ghost from Faker. We'll see what he can make. No ultimate up there, but can this actually be the turnaround that Chandong needs? Jihoon is actually the one to get locked up. He's going to die there from the Malefic Vision. They will actually reset onto Jeha. Those Voidlings chasing him out. It might be another kill coming in from Faker. The Voidlings do find that kill, but now Faker's in a little bit of trouble. He's going to go down there to Fire Rain, as at least it is going to be that one for two exchange, still in SKT's favor. But the first First kill on the board for Chungna. Yeah, uh, first kill indeed. Definitely worth you. Uh, you killed Faker. <laughs> That's probably how there we go. Somewhere out it. there, the ghost of Dumbledore is rolling over. It was all worth, comment. if only for that. So Faker ghosted really prematurely. They were unaware that Chandong and Jeha were here, but it doesn't really matter. And you can just see the damage from Faker is absolutely enormous. And uh, Jeha ended up getting locked up basically by Faker and staying a little bit too long, ends up dying to the Malefic Visions and the damage from the Voidlings. And all the meanwhile, Profit up in top lane, getting a little bit of profit for SK Telecom as uh, he raised a tower. I see what you did there, LS. Very well named. He is going to be cashing in there. And of course, uh, SKT cashing in for an almost 5,000 gold lead here at almost 13 minutes. So uh, things looking very, very good. Of course, if you want to check out the gold charts, you can actually see the Prophet is the richest player on the team once again, living up to his name. Yep. And uh, now, I mean, 
just look at how Prophet's itemizing. Mal, uh, Maul of Malmordius, and uh, he already has the Magic Resistance Tier 2 boots. And this is the problem that Chung Nam's team composition has, is that you can just stack Magic Resistance, and you can actually see uh, Olaf has the option to actually go into lock -in. Jeha looking to get that, but you can't kick Faker. He's got his passive up, and that kick is completely ineffective. Jeha now trying to get back over the wall to the red buff. That's now chasing him back away. Blank there to walk into red buff's loving arms. Uh, watching Prophet take that turret down. Exciting though it may be, not where the action's at. That's around the red buff, but here comes Jihoon just to clear the wave. Save that top tier, second, top, second tier turret. Uh, keep it from going down here. Blank will inevitably secure this red buff after smiting at 91 HP. Take it away from KEG Chungnam. Chandong up to try to stop the recall, but just barely not in time. The siege continues in the mid lane for SK Telecom. Yep. And uh, SK Telecom looking to raise this tier 1 mid turret. I don't even think that KCN can really resist this once uh, one or two more waves arrives. and. Dragon coming up in uh, just over a minute now. SK Telecom obviously the ones in position to be getting that. Wow, Wolf actually hit that bubble. Certainly did. Now Jihoon is actually so low. The exhaust's gonna come down, but it's not enough to hit the save. There's the suppression. The Nether Grasp allowing another kill for Prophet to come on through. Fire Rain trying to turn that one around. He does get a big heal from that Hemo Plague, but it's not enough to find any kills. And SK Telecom get in for two kills and now get out with another one of Chung Nam's buffs. And uh, blue buff gonna go over to Faker, I believe. The Voidlings were there to uh, clean that up as Chung Nam looks to try to capture a turret. It would be their first of the game. So far they only have that one kill. 6k gold lead at 15 minutes. Not a situation that you want to be in. And I mean, if you just, again, going back to their itemization, you look at it right now. Vladimir forced to itemize Spirit Visage as his first item. The only source of magic damage really coming out from SK Telecom is on Faker. So the fact that he's forced to itemize to defend against Faker is just going to basically enable him to com get completely obliterated by Bang and Profit. Uh, and meanwhile, on SK Telecom's side, they can just continue to stack magic resistance and build normally, and there's nothing that Chun Nam can do about it. Right to score completed there on blank. He's got a little bit of magic resistance, but more than that, he's just going to be this powerhouse. He's going to be the Armageddon that runs the Ragnarok straight in to KUG Chung Nam, who really might just not be able to do it. Now, uh, to deal with it, Jeha does secure an Inferno Drake there for KUG Chung Nam at the cost of the second tier turret. So, uh, was that really worth it to get that dragon for KEG? I mean, well, if they can manage to somehow hold on for another 20 minutes or so, yeah, it'll be worth it in the end. Um, but I mean, giving resources to SKT, okay, well, Wolf might die here. Okay, Wolf actually does get a nice knock up the flash away, and he's gonna survive an incredible escape there by the SK Telecom support. Yeah, so, I mean, it's worth, but it's not worth, because all SK Telecom want is to keep... Uh, getting resources to just get those items and plow through Chung Nam. Um, so, I mean, it, generally an Infernal Drake is going to be a pretty good pickup, but in this case, it's it's not. Is going to help maybe just a little bit there, uh, but at the same time, not worth losing quite so much. And at this point, we're already cresting a 7,000 gold lead uh, here at 17 minutes into the game. You don't mess around with SK Telecom because they are not messing around with Chung Nam. Now uh, Siege is starting in mid lane. Faker not present for it, but that's probably not going to matter too much. Deha off to the side. Sonic Wave maybe trying to come in there and look for an insect onto a valuable target, but just no opportunities. And now, uh, okay, well, there's no uh, no Baron here. This is still a, a, a poor, unha uh, unhelp a helpless Rift Herald. It's going to go down here, kind of the uh, crime of opportunity, SK Telecom in the area. Uh, if that had been one of those 15-minute Baron spawns from the days of yore, then that would certainly be going their way. Instead, it is uh, Bang that's actually going to get the Rift Herald buff. Yep. So they put that on Bang, not necessarily uh, a bad choice at all. Uh, will help for his, uh, his all-in when he charges at someone when that thing is fully stacked. And two minutes until Baron. Almost a 10,000 gold lead here for SK Telecom at 18 minutes. Uh, I feel like this game is all but over. 
But then again, we did see uh, a team yesterday manage to almost blow 10,000 plus gold leads. Oh god. In fact, they did. <laughs> if you guys have not seen that Longzhu versus Jin Air series that LS is referencing, go check it out. Neither here nor there. Here is where we are. Profit. Kind of playing with a little bit of fire here. 1v3. And there's the flash. The tether will land. There's an exhaust as well. Emo Plague underneath the turret. Fire Rain's going to go for it. Go for it. There's the kick underneath the turret. The arrow flying through, but it's not enough to save the SKT top laner. Who will fall for the second kill on the board? K E G Chung Nam. All right, so rapid. Let me tell you what they just did. They they blew a flash, another flash, a ghost, an exhaust, and an exhaust just to kill Profit. We're gonna watch all of those summoner spells and more be used right here. Uh, Profit trying to do the utmost to survive, and at this point, this is when you just know the world hates you. There's three enemy champions blowing all of their summoner spells just to find a kill on that hapless. Top laner. Now, uh, Jha does get the smite steal away there from Wolf, uh, or for, from Blank rather. He prevents the smite steal from coming in. So here's the red buff for what feels like the second time this game, because uh, Blank has been all over his jungle. Yep, and uh, I mean at this point, Baron coming up in 30 seconds. So they have Faker down there in the bottom lane, and I feel like SK Telecom's actually being a little bit more passive than they need to be. Also, a Bomby Cinder uh, now out for Blank, so expect to see Cinder Hulk in the coming moments. Not even really having to itemize that much magic resistance. He's completely ahead of the game here when it comes to tanky stats. Here comes a nice tidal wave. It actually does just barely catch Jha. And a little bit of a rough spot. Perfect bubble landed there by Wolf, and that's going to allow Blank to take him out. He's going to Ragnarok his way all the way through that tasty end jungler and really claim control once again. Uh, Throwback to the, the days of Des Moines that uh, Diamond Prox was just owning up the jungle. Blank kind of doing the same thing, saying, this belongs to me. And remember that uh, teams with Malzahar are immune to Baron and Elder Dragon, as long as Malzahar has near 30% CDR. So as you can see, they're not really taking a lot of damage. Teleport coming in and oh. Okay, that teleport actually canceled. I think SKT is going for the bonus, canceling the TP. Now re-engage. Okay, Prophet's actually almost dead, so gotta gotta play it carefully. And SKT will disengage there from the Baron. That actually feels like a kind of a win for KAG Chung Nam, just utilizing that summoner spell to push SKT off the objective. Yeah, it does come at the cost of their teleport, which is actually very vital. Uh, for Wu Te to be able to find a way into the back line of SK Telecom because if you try to run straight up the front, Faker's just going to lock you down. And when Faker locks you down, uh, you're going to stay down. With the exception of that first time he tried to get the solo kill on Fire Rain and it didn't work out, there's an exception to every rule. But uh, in general, Faker doing a, a great job so far. He's even in CS, but up 3 to 1. Fire Rain, though, got to keep an eye on this guy, even though he's found his kills in ways that are pretty much guaranteed, maybe a little bit too many resources invested into it. Uh, you know, a kill is a kill nonetheless, and nice to see him living up to the hype that we gave him early on. Oh, and another Inferno Drake actually will spawn. So if Chunnam can get that dragon, that would actually be super, super big for them at that point. Uh, definitely, you're going to want to uh, watch for if they can secure the vision control necessary in order to catch it out. And I feel like Faker uh, and SK Telecom as a whole this game, even with their advantages, have been a little bit too safe. Uh, I don't like how passive they've been playing this and how they've uh, moved Faker around the map. Uh, definitely feels a little bit slow, but it doesn't matter as they are the ones in position to take this Inferno Drake. And I don't know why they're even moving towards mid. Looking for a pick, and they will find it onto Wu Te. He's going to get some shields, but right into a perfectly arced bubble. And here goes Blank. There's no stopping this Olaf. Uh, or is there? As he runs in, runs right back out, and uh, now SK Telecom on the Dragon. They, they did blow the Cannon Flash, which is big for stopping that engage on their team when they're clustered up for Dragon. Uh, and they did get Fire Rain to Ghost out as well, but what, was that really worth it? Uh, well, my issue with this was is that they were moving towards mid as if Chung Nam was going to try to do Baron as SK Telecom does Dragon, but they can't really do that because they don't have the damage in order to uh, kill the Baron that fast before SK Telecom could respond. Um, so it was a, bit, a little bit weird because I feel like they can almost never actually find kills uh, in that mid lane engagement. So it's a little bit of a wasted time, but 
nonetheless, Profit down here in the bottom lane. SK Telecom did get the Inferno Drake, and I don't even think Fire Rain should. Okay, all right. He's just gonna pick up the wave. That's fine. Profit gonna recall. And at this point, Fire Rain is actually a really big asset to his team. When it comes down to perfect execution, uh, in in the magical fairy tale world where KEG Chungam get the perfect engage, it looks pretty sweet. Hemo Plague into a huge cannon ult, maybe a, a perfect insect on Bang in the back line, and you know lots of damage there to follow up from Changdong and Jihoon. Maybe that's that's going to be good enough for SK Telecom. Though it certainly doesn't look like they're really even giving Chungam the opportunity. Uh, to even find a, an engage that looks remotely similar to that. Yep. And Playing very carefully, very safely, uh, unlike that last performance uh, in Game 2 that we saw from Samsung. And definitely SK Telecom would actually like to fight before Kenning can complete that Zhonya's Hourglass. That would be an ideal scenario, and Wolf just clearing out vision inside of that Baron pit right now. No more vision around it for uh, Chungnam, and Again, SK Telecom taking their sweet, precious time with this, and I can't actually see a reason for it. It doesn't make any sense to me, and I, I don't really know what's going on in, in that situ or scenario or what's happening in the comms, but they could have driven home this lead way faster. Maybe at this point you really have to just get into uh, SK Telecom's heads and look at kind of the history of uh, their team in this tournament. Uh, Kespa Cup is the only title that SKT could have won that they haven't. Uh, they fell in the early stages to uh, ESC Ever last year in what is one of the most memorable upsets given that ESC Ever were completely unproven uh, as a team at that point. So this time around, much a, a much similar situation but SK Telecom coming off their world's victory uh, find themselves uh, slow and steady as they look to win this race. Yeah, and right now, oh, Baker got hit right there, but nothing's probably going to happen. Does drop his passive just for a second. We've already seen that passive come up big as uh, Jaha tried to kick him around. It didn't actually work out. There's the arrow. Arcane shifted away from Jihoon, now trying to escape. Will flash away from there. That is the fastest Olaf you will ever watch, even under that exhaust. He's still able to push Jihoon backwards. Baker trying to get up into the front line, but he's actually going to be the first one going down. It's SK Telecom way overextend. They're going to lose a two for one, and now Profit coming in. Can he actually be the one to close this up? It's just going to destroy Jihoon, get right on top of him, clear <laughs> off. <laughs> okay, the hammer, the hammer oh, animation disgusting. is so hilarious. wu just got bopped off right there. He's one of the, the groundhogs that sticks their head up through those little holes, dropping the hammer right down on top. Profit saying, okay, well, my team can overextend. He's there to, over, to, uh, to compensate with a triple kill. Yeah. And uh, Prophet clown bopping Chunnam <laughs> right out of the game. And That's the new technique, the clown bop. When you just got to get that last hit with a hammer. Do you know what Debonair Jace's uh, splash art looks like in the loading screen? What it reminds it me of like? Negan from The Walking Dead. Oh my god. <laughs> that hammer right now, that's named Lu Big that's fan named of Lucille. bopping itself. Now, we're going to watch Blank run circles around the entire KG Chunnam team. Goes in, goes back out, but Faker, getting uh, uh, to, to J-House credit, kicked right back into the middle of the enemy team. Perfect capitalization, but now it's KEG Chungnam that just aren't ready for the profit. Yeah, about they, to predict their untimely demise. Right there, he told him that uh, Debonair Jace is better than Debonair Ezreal, and uh, Wute got the hammer as well. And this is what I meant. You just saw the damage that came out of profit, and there's nothing Chungnam can actually do to resist that damage right now. And so why these team fights aren't happening sooner, I'm really not sure, because Jace will actually just one combo three members on Chungnam's team. That's true. Uh, there's no lethality in League of Legends yet at this point. On this patch, it's all about the flat armor penetration. Profit has so much of it, and at this stage, when you're this far ahead, I mean, it's, it might be 30 minutes in, but he's just miles ahead of anyone on Chungnam. And uh, Faker being in bottom lane, I mean, this is a... L <laughs> I mean, I have to call a spade a spade. This is actually pretty moronic uh, to have him in bottom lane at this point because it, it, there's no reason to drag the game on. You just saw what Jace can actually do. Um, and having him down there, he doesn't gain anything from these weird split pushes. He doesn't threaten anything. If he had teleport, it would be one thing. 
but to keep enabling the, the enemy team to keep scaling, they still do have a Vladimir and an Ezreal, so stuff can get scary uh, if it does reach that super late game stage. And I just don't know what's happening or why they're not accelerating their advantage even faster. Well, when it comes to accelerating, at least they're doing that very quickly. I've never seen an Olaf run quite as fast, uh, quite as quickly as Blank when he really wants to, you know, get in there and got to go fast. But uh, that's about the only thing that SKT are doing very quickly at this point. Um, uh, playing this very carefully, and at, at some point that becomes a little scary when you do things like the Baron. If it gets stolen away, maybe that's a way back in for Chung Nam. But uh, this is sort of setting up to be sort of the, the profit highlight reel. The new player on SKT playing his heart out in this great opportunity uh, to help them win the only tournament they've never been able to. Yeah, and uh, Cloud Drake going to be picked up here by SK Telecom, and I really just don't understand what is going on because it is so easy to do a Baron bait with Malzahar right now, and they're not going for it, and I, I can't wrap my head around why. Oh, ye of little faith, LS. It's, uh, sometimes you, you witness so much greatness that it just overloads you. It, it's too much. It's like, you know, it's like degrees. You start at zero, you go over to 360, and it might look like zero, but it's actually 360 because you've come all the way around. Now looking for the pick there from SK Telecom. That was like a desperate attempt at an analogy that, to try to make sense of what's going on. Because at this point, SK Telecom is, I, I don't know, taking their good sweet time with everything. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know uh, really what to say. Okay, they finally are going to start the Baron. No damage, of course, being taken from this, thanks to Malzahar's Voidling army. Uh, I, they're, they're, they're hesitating. They're trying to pull off. It looks like they're just going to go for the stats here. Picking off Shandong almost immediately. There's a big Hemo play on the three. Fire Rain going in. He's going to get a big heal and stay alive thanks to all of his magic resistance. That won't help him against Prophet, however, <laughs> who's coming in with more damage than he knows what to do with. Wu Tae's got other plans, and he's going to actually Proto Belt on top of the entire SK Telecom team, who are melting under what appears to be a relatively good fight for KEG Chung Nam. Now, Jaha versus Prophet. Jaha with a flash over the wall. Prophet might actually still look for that one. The Shock Blast, nice dodge. Jaha. Stays alive, and at the end of everything, that's a two for three exchange. I mean, it, it's actually not even funny right now because Prophet had flash, Faker had flash, Bang had flash. Let's watch this again. So, Ch uh, Chandong gets caught up immediately, completely deleted from the fight, and you're gonna see Jaha actually give Faker, uh, or he's gonna do him a favor and knock him into even better position. You see how low Jihoon is, and look at where Prophet is. Now, he doesn't have flash right now. But he couldn't make up his mind, and because of that, Faker ends up going down to Fire Rain. Bang ends up getting locked up as well, and then Prophet just able to find a kill onto Fire Rain right at the end. And actually, my mistake, uh, his flash did not come up until the very, very end of the fight, so I criticized him unfairly. Um, but still, it, his indecisiveness is, is questionable, and just the positioning by SKT as the fight kept developing was also a little bit weird. I, like you said, so many things going well for SK Telecom. They find the pick. Faker gets knocked into a great position. Uh, gotta give some credit to Wute, who just had the manliest of cannon ults right into the middle of SK Telecom. Locked them all up, took Wolf down, and helped Faker uh, ultimately meet his untimely demise. And that's uh, a little worrying now that we're starting to see SK Telecom, uh, you know, slow and steady, might win the race if you're a turtle. But this is SK Telecom the best team in the world by a lot of different measures and seeing them have uh, those struggles against Chung Nam, uh, a little worrying. Yeah, this is definitely a little bit worrying indeed. Ghost almost up for Faker, Flash up for Prophet this time around and Blank, so full spells and almost a Guardian Angel actually for Blank. And okay. okay, well Faker just wants to make a pick happen and he will bang with the arrow to connect as well. That might just be the pick that SK Telecom need for Baron. Yeah, and they, uh, you see a ping going down there on bottom lane. That means that Prophet is free to just uh, basically keep pushing the wave. And if Wu Tae teleports, they can easily back off this Baron and let Prophet get the inhibitor turret. Well, they're continuing to stay on, and Voidling's tanking up the majority of the damage. Jihoon 
Having to be careful there as the Arcane shifts over the wall after almost getting caught out. In the meantime, Profit going to town. You see the good communication there from SK Telecom just telling him he's good to go on that bottom lane to take the turrets. Yeah, and now an 11,000 gold lead for SK Telecom here. Still no turrets for Chungnam either. Teleport coming in this time from Profit to aid the rest of his SKT team as they do take that Baron down to half HP and it's do or die right now. KEG Chungnam will not be able to get there in time to steal the Baron away from SK Telecom. Shandong and Jihoon off to the side are actually taking a lot of damage. Baker is forced away. Another gigantic ult from Wu Te. Starts to turn this fight maybe around. He is going to take so much damage and Profit is just unmatched. Nothing that they can do to stop this SK Telecom top laner aside from just kicking oh. him away. A perfect shot class. It's a triple kill so far. Flank to finish things off, and that is a five for one exchange. Bang, the only casualty of war is SK Telecom sweep the fight. Yeah, and Profit is just absolutely enormous in this game. And this is going to be the final push right here. They are going to raise those turrets super quick. And with the Baron buff minions, there's no hope anymore for Chung Nam, at least not in game number one. But uh, still, nonetheless, they did still have some pretty decent team fighting against SK Telecom at certain points. And uh, turns out an 11,000 gold lead is pretty good. That'll do it. Uh, game one victory, 21 to 8 for SK Telecom. T1 over KEG Chung Nam. And while uh, it was somewhat inevitable there towards the end, some signs of life from KEG. A, a great performance there by Fire Rain in the mid lane, holding his own against Faker. Uh, and uh, for Wu Tae up in the top lane, his cannon ults were actually so good. So just going to need to see more of the same with less of those difficulties. And for SK Telecom, Maybe uh, step on the gas a little bit more to more decisively pick up these wins. We're going to head off to a quick commercial break here any moment now as we prepare ourselves for the second game, our final series of this round of 12. Hope you guys have been enjoying the games tonight. Get out there, hashtag Kespa Cup as we get ready to come back for game number two of SKT versus KEG Chungna. Next.